Queen Elizabeth II was born Princess Elizabeth Alexandra Mary in London on April 21, 1926 to Prince Albert, Duke of York, later known as King George VI, and Elizabeth Bowes Lyon. Elizabeth enjoyed a pampered life as a Princess of the United Kingdom. Her younger sister, Princess Margaret, was born in 1930 and her family was close. The little princess and her younger sister were trained at home by private tutors who taught them French, arithmetic and history as well as lessons in dancing, singing and arts. Though she spent much of her childhood with nannies, young Elizabeth was significantly influenced by her mother, who instilled in her a devout Christian faith as well as a keen understanding of the demands of royal life. Her grandmother, Queen Mary, consort of King George V, also instructed Elizabeth and her younger sister, Margaret, in the fine points of royal etiquette. The young princess even trained as a girl guide and developed a lifelong passion for horses. Everything changed for Elizabeth in 1936 when her beloved grandfather, King George V, died and her uncle became King Edward VIII. However, in late 1936, her uncle abdicated the throne to marry an American divorcee, Wally Simpson. As a result, her father became King George VI and 10-year-old Lilibet became the heir presumptive to the throne. As the future queen, life for 10-year-old princess took a dramatic turn as she now had to prepare to lead the country. The public and the press chronicled and scrutinized Elizabeth's every move, but she handled the pressure expertly. With the outbreak of World War II in 1939, Elizabeth and her sister lived mostly outside London, having been moved to Windsor Castle. From there, in 1940, she made the first of her famous radio broadcasts, encouraging the British children who had been displaced from their homes and families. Eventually, Elizabeth started performing other civic roles. Appointed by her father as Colonel-in-Chief of the Grenadier Guards, she made her first public appearance inspecting the troops in 1942 and also began accompanying her parents on official visits in Britain. In 1945, Elizabeth joined the Auxiliary Territorial Service to help in the war effort, training side by side with other British women to be an expert driver and mechanic. Though her volunteer work lasted just a few months, it enabled Elizabeth a peek into different non-royal world. King George VI soon named her as a member of the Privy Council and the Council of State, allowing her to act on his behalf when he was out of the country. In 1947, the royal family announced Elizabeth's engagement to Prince Philip of Greece. Her third cousin, both were great-great-grandparents of Queen Victoria and Prince Albert and a lieutenant in the Royal Navy. She had set her sights on him when she was only 13 and their relationship developed through visits and correspondence during the war. Though many in the royal circle viewed Philip as an unwise match due to his lack of money and foreign German blood, Elizabeth was determined and very much in love. She and Philip wed on November 20, 1947 at Westminster Abbey. The Anuk tour was an international event with millions of people all over the world listening to the BBC broadcast. In 1948, the young married couple had their first child, Prince Charles. They'd go on to have four children in total. Charles, Anne, Andrew, and Edward. With her father's health declining in 1951, the budding leader stepped in for him at various state functions. After spending the Christmas with the royal family, Elizabeth and Philip left on a tour of Australia and New Zealand, making a stopover in Kenya en route. They were in Kenya on February 6, 1952, when King George VI succumbed to lung cancer at the age of 56. His 25-year-old daughter became the sixth woman in the history to ascend to the British throne. Her formal coronation as Queen Elizabeth II took place on June 2, 1953 in Westminster Abbey and was televised worldwide in 39 different languages. In the first decade of her reign, Elizabeth settled into her role as Queen, developing a close bond with Prime Minister Winston Churchill, the first of 13 Prime Ministers she would work with during her reign. She weathered a foreign affairs disaster in the Suez crisis in 1956, as well as making numerous state trips abroad. In response to pointed criticism in the press, 
the queen embraced steps to modernize her image and that of the monarchy, including televising her annual Christmas broadcast for the first time in 1957. As one might expect, having a normal family life as Queen of Britain was virtually impossible, but Elizabeth did her best. She remained faithful to Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, today as of 2020, and has eight grandchildren and eight great-grandchildren. She declared Charles her successor formally in 1969 by granting him the title of Prince of Wales. Thousands of millions of viewers were tuned in to watch the event on television. In 1981, Charles, 32, married 19-year-old Diana Spencer, popularly known as Princess Diana, amid rumors that he had been forced into the union by his family. Though the couple soon welcomed two sons, William, 1982, and Harry, 1984, their marriage quickly imploded, causing considerable public embarrassment for the Queen and the entire royal family. After Charles and Diana divorced in 1996, Diana remained incredibly popular with the British and international public. Her tragic death in the following year triggered a tremendous outpouring of shock and grief, as well as outrage at the royal family for what the public saw as the ill treatment of the people's princess. When the Queen delayed in releasing a statement, the Queen's popularity and that of the entire royal family rebounded when she marked her golden jubilee in 2002, 50 years on the throne. However, the death of her mother, the beloved Queen Mum and sister early that year cast a pall on the celebrations. In 2005, the Queen enjoyed public support when she gave her consent to Prince Charles's once unthinkable marriage to his longtime love, Camilla Parker Bowles, in her seventh decade on the throne. Queen Elizabeth presided over the pomp and circumstance of another royal wedding at Westminster Abbey, that of Prince William to Catherine Middleton in April 2011. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, who will likely become Britain's next king and queen, continued the line of succession with their children, Prince George, born 2013, Princess Charlotte, born 2015, and Prince Louis, born 2018. A consistent presence by his wife's side and one of Britain's busiest royals for much of her reign, Prince Philip stepped down from his royal duties in 2017 at the age of 96. That same year, the royal couple celebrated 70 years of marriage, making theirs the longest union in the history of the British monarchy. In May 2018, Prince Harry, now sixth in the line to the throne after his brother's children, wed the American actress Meghan Markle a biracial divorcee whose embrace by the royal family indicated just how modern it had become during Elizabeth's long reign. On May 6, 2019, Prince Harry, Duke of Sussex, and his wife, Meghan Markle, gave the Queen another great-grandchild with the birth of their son, Archie Harrison Mountbatten Windsor. In addition to Prince Williams and Prince Harry, the Queen's other grandchildren are Peter Phillips, Princess Beatrice of York, Princess Eugene of York, Zara Tyndall, Lady Louise Windsor, and James, Viscount Severn. Although the Queen is the British government's head of state officially, she rarely gets involved in politics. Queen Elizabeth II has been very cautious to keep out of politics during her rule, and little is known of her political opinions. Early in her rule, she chose the Prime Minister to establish a Conservative Party government. Her first nominee in 1957 was Harold Macmillan, and in 1963, the second was Alec Douglas Home. In later years, the political parties have adopted their means of selecting the Prime Minister. Though Queen Elizabeth is not personally involved in politics, from a public perspective, she meets with the Prime Minister once a week for updates on government issues and state matters. Prime Ministers, such as Winston Churchill, offered advice to the young queen at the beginning of her reign. But with her years of experience today, the queen likely can offer advice to the prime minister. In her long reign, the queen has encountered some devastating events. In 1992, her second son, Prince Andrew, and his wife, Sarah, separated, following by her daughter, Princess Anne, divorcing Captain Mark Phillips. That same year, a large fire broke out at Windsor Castle one of her official residences. The Queen has also been a target of non-fatal gunshots. During 1981, trooping the colour ceremony, 
She was fired six blank shots at close range by 17-year-old Marcus Sargent, who was sentenced to five years in prison and released after three. On a visit to Dundon, New Zealand, in October of the same year, 17-year-old Christopher John Lewis fired a shot from the fifth floor of a building overlooking the parade with a .22 Miller rifle, which missed. The young star was apprehended and sentenced to three years in jail for unlawful possession and discharge of a firearm. Queen Elizabeth II has traveled extensively around the world during her reign. She is one of the world's most widely traveled heads of state and has visited more than 130 countries. She was especially busy in the 1970s when she made 73 journeys, visiting 48 different countries. Elizabeth's private interests include horses, dogs, especially Welsh corgis, and Scottish country dancing. She began riding horses at age 6 and became an accomplished rider by her teens. She took a keen interest in breeding horses and owning thoroughbred horses for racing. Her love of corgis started as a young girl and continued to this day. The Queen celebrated her 90th birthday in 2016 but showed little signs of slowing down. She continues to follow much the same schedule as she has for the entirety of her reign, including official work, public appearances, and plenty of time outside with her beloved dogs and horses. Though rumors have swirled at various times that Queen Elizabeth would step aside and let Prince Charles take the throne, in 2017, she delegated some of her royal obligations, such as the official Remembrance Day ceremony, to her eldest son. However, many royal experts doubt she will ever abdicate. As of March 2020, the net worth of Queen Elizabeth II is estimated to be over $600 million. Thank you very much for watching our videos. We'll appreciate if you subscribe to our channel and share this video with your friends. We love you.